In this video, we'll explore how to use Azure and IntelliJ IDEA to create, develop, and deploy your applications to the cloud. Let's start by setting up IntelliJ IDEA to work with Azure. First, we'll download the Azure Toolkit plugin by going to our Settings window, selecting Plugins, making sure the Marketplace tab is selected, then typing in Azure Toolkit in the search bar. I'll click on the Install button for the plugin, and once the installation is complete, I'll restart my IDE. After the IDE restarts, you'll notice a new Azure Explorer 2 window. This window will let you interact with Azure from right within IntelliJ IDEA. I'll connect my IDE to Azure using the Sign In button. This will bring up a window with various options to sign in to my Azure account. If you don't have an Azure account, you can sign up for one using the Try Azure for Free link at the bottom of this window. If you already have an account, pick any of the sign-in options shown here. I found that the easiest way to sign in is using the OAuth option, so I'll keep that selected and click Sign In. This will open up my browser to the page where I can log in to my Azure account. I'll go ahead and log in. I now see a message that my authentication is complete, so I'll go back to IntelliJ IDEA. I see a prompt with a list of subscription associated with my Azure account. Depending on your account, you may see one or many subscriptions to choose from in this window. Select the subscriptions you'd like to work with in IntelliJ IDEA. You'll now see the resources associated with your Azure account in the Azure Explorer window, so you can create, browse and interact with your Azure services without leaving your IDE. Now that we have IntelliJ IDEA working with Azure, let's take a look at how to deploy an application to the cloud. I've cloned the Spring Pet Clinic sample app and I've got it running locally. Let's say I want to take my app and deploy it to the cloud. I can easily do that by right-clicking on the project, going to the Azure menu at the bottom, then selecting Deploy to Azure Web App. Azure Web App is a service that provides you with a platform to run your applications on Azure. Once you select this option, you'll see a configuration window where you can specify the deployment configuration for your application. I'll take the default configuration name and artifact. In the Web App field, I'll create a new Web App Service instance using the plus button. To create a new web app service, I need to first specify the domain name where users can reach my application running in the cloud. I can either take the default or enter a custom domain name. I'll take the default. Note that this name needs to be unique across Azure. Next, I need to choose the platform I want Azure to provide for my application. There are several platform options available to choose from. You'll want to select a platform that is compatible with your application. For example, the Spring Pet Clinic app only needs Java SE to run successfully, so I'll choose the Linux Java 17 Java SE platform for my application. I'll click OK and finish configuring my deployment. I'll check this box, which will automatically open up the browser to the URL where my app is running once it's deployed to Azure. I'm now ready to deploy my application, so I'll click Run. First, I see Maven building my application, running my tests, then packaging my app into a jar. Once the build is successful, I see a new tab showing a web app service getting created in Azure, along with a new resource group that will contain all the resources for my application. Now my application jar is getting deployed to Azure. I've sped this up a bit, but the process can take a little bit of time, especially the first time you're deploying a brand new application. Once the app is deployed, IntelliJ IDEA automatically opens up my browser to the URL where my app is deployed. I can now see my pet clinic application successfully running in the cloud. Now that we have an application deployed, let's take a look at how to interact with our running application from IntelliJ IDEA. I'll open up the Azure Explorer window, and you'll notice a highlighted node that was created for the Pet Clinic application we just deployed. The node has a green icon indicating that the app is currently running in Azure. 
I can use this node to interact with my deployed application. For example, if I right click on my application node, I can stop, restart, and delete the application running in Azure. I can also start streaming my application logs right in my IDE. Let's go to our running application and try to trigger an error to see what happens. Luckily, the pet clinic sample has a button just to do that. Now that I've triggered an error in my app, I can go back to my IDE to look at the application logs. Here, I see the updated logs showing that something went wrong with my application. Another option I find useful when working with my applications is the ability to easily access my application's Azure portal page. I can do that by right-clicking on the node and selecting Open in Portal. The Azure portal gives me access to additional functionality as well as my application's metrics. Now that we've taken a look at how to deploy and work with our applications, let's take a look at some of the other Azure services available to us. One of the most useful services in Azure are database services that help developers set up, operate, and scale their databases in the cloud. For example, I can easily create a MySQL database by right-clicking on the Azure database for MySQL node and selecting Create. For this tutorial, I've gone ahead and created a MySQL database for my Pet Clinic sample app and configured the application to use this database. I can now use the database node to stop, restart, or delete my database server. I often find it helpful to use the Open by Database Tools option to open my database in the database window. Once I enter in my database password and make sure I connected my database successfully, I'll be able to access my database running in Azure right within my IDE. From there, I can browse my data and interact with my database hosted in the cloud. Another useful service in Azure is the ability to create and deploy serverless applications using Azure Functions. You can create a new Azure function by going to the New Project menu, selecting Azure Functions, then choosing the type of trigger that you'd like to use to invoke your function. In this case, I'll choose HTTP Trigger and select Next. I'll use Maven as my build tool and keep the defaults here, then click Next. I'll give my project a name, then click Create. A new Azure function is created for me with a template class that listens for an HTTP request and responds with a message. You can run and debug functions in your local environment by using the Run icon. I'll go ahead and run my function. I see the logs showing the function starting, then I see the URL where my function is running locally. I'll click on the URL to make a request to my function, and now that I've triggered my function, I can see a response back saying that my request is bad. Looks like the function expects a name parameter, so let's make another request, and this time I'll pass in a name. Now I see a successful response from the function with a hello message. Let's say I'm done writing my application and I'm ready to deploy it to the cloud. You can do that by right-clicking on the project, going to the Azure menu, and selecting Deploy to Azure Function. A configuration window will come up, and in the Function field, I'll create a new function service. I'll be prompted to enter in a domain name for my service and a platform to run my function on. I can select any platform option for my function. I'll try out the Windows of Java 11 platform and click OK. I'm now ready to deploy my function to the cloud, so I'll click Run. I see the logs showing all the resources getting created along with my Azure function. I'll speed this up a bit. Once the function is deployed, I see a URL in the logs, but this time the URL is pointing to the function hosted on Azure. I can click on the URL to make requests to my function running in the cloud. Now that I have a function deployed to Azure, you'll notice a new node in the Azure Explorer window. I can use this node to interact with my running function. Along with the Azure function node, you'll also notice a second application insights node. 
This application insights service was created for me when I created my Azure function. If I double click on this node, I'll find performance metrics associated with my function, such as the number of failed requests and server response time. Lastly, I'd like to mention a few tips about working with Azure and IntelliJ IDEA. When you're working with your deployments on Azure, there are a few ways to interact with your resources. For example, let's say I want to work with the Azure function I created earlier. I can either navigate to my function under the resource group parent node, or I can navigate to my function under the Azure node. The two nodes are meant to give you two views of your Azure deployments. The node under the resource group provides an application centric view of your application. It groups your application service along with other related services that share the same resource group. On the other hand, the Azure node organizes your deployments by Azure service type. You can use whichever view works for you. I personally find myself using the application-centric view a lot more since it provides me with a way to easily view and access my application and any related services all in one place. I also like to pin any resources I'm actively working on by right-clicking on the resource and marking it as favorite. This brings those resources up to the top of the Azure Explorer window. I tend to use the Azure node to create or explore new services. There are lots of services listed here. I recommend going through them and exploring any services you might find helpful for your applications. You can use this icon to find additional information about the Azure Toolkit, including a link to the blogs and documentation. In addition to the Azure Explorer tool window, you can find additional Azure Toolkit features under the Tools menu. If you have any feedback or suggestions on the Azure Toolkit, you can quickly provide feedback using this button. In this video, we looked at how to use IntelliJ IDEA to create, develop, and deploy our applications to Azure. Thanks for watching.